See you again, local heroes. We are back in everyone's favorite program, Local Wisdom. Local heroes, childhood is a time when human experience a process of rapid growth and development in various aspects. Children's development is strongly influenced by the social environment in which they grow. The influencing environment is family and society. In Indonesia, many traditions help strengthen the children's social development from the early age, either through games or other traditions. Local heroes, in this episode, we will provide various information about traditions from various regions in Indonesia related to children. Of course, in our Vavrid program, Local Wisdom. In this first segment, Local Wisdom will present information about traditional games from various regions in Indonesia. Traditional games are type of games played by children in a local area and are traditional that are passed down from generation to generation. Not only provides benefit for mental health and physical fitness for those who play it, traditional games also contain community cultural values which are the main characteristic of this game. Traditional games performed by children in Indonesia have benefits for intellectual, social, and personality development. The traditional games also have recreational, competitive, and educational characteristics. Well, local heroes, here are some traditional games from Indonesia. The first famous traditional games in Indonesia is Jamrup. Jamrup is one of the traditional games that are usual play by girls. But some boys play it. Jamrup games is played by at least three people, where two players stretch and hold the rope, while other players have to cross or jump over the rope. The rules in this game are simple. Two rope holders adjust the height of the rope to knee level, and the jumper must try to jump over the rope. If the jumper manages to pass it, then the rope height will be raised to stomach level, then chest level, and if the jumper succeeds, then the rope will be lifted above the head. However, if the jumper fails to pass, then he or she must become the rope holder, and the rope goes back down to knee level. There is another exciting game called Anklet. This game is known by various names in various regions. In Betawi, this game is known as Dampu Bulan. In Riau, it is called Setata. In Nusa Tenggara Timur, it is known as Sikidoka. And in Batak Toba, it is known as Marsiteka. Enekle is played by jumping with one foot and the boxes that have been made in a certain pattern. Players are allowed to put their feet on both boxes at the same time. There are several types of patterns commonly used to play ankle, such as letter L, windmill, and the shape of a mountain. The rules of ankle game are the player throws a coin into the closest box, then he or she must pass through the square and must not step on the coin that is previously thrown by the player. After that, the player returns to the starting line picks up the coin, then continues tossing the coin to the next box. Next up is Ular Naga Panjang, or the Long Dragon Snake. In the past, this game was very popular among children. They usually gathered in a field to play this game. It will be more fun if it's played by many players. This traditional game can make your heart flutter and make you laugh at the same time. Ular Naga Panjang is easy to play and it can be played by more than 7 people. Here are the steps to play the game. First, determine 2 people who play as the guards. After the guard have been chosen, 
Then the rest of the people must line up and put their hand on the shoulder of the friends in front of them. After that, they walk in the cycle and pass the quart while singing their Ular Naga song. When the singing is over, it's time for the quart to catch one person. The person that catch must get out of line and all the continue the games from the beginning. It's called the Long Dragon Snake game because the player make a long road that look like a snake and it's big like a dragon. The next game comes from East Java province, Beckle Ball Game. This game involves a ball and six pieces of metal called Beckle. It's called Beckle or Becklen as it's derived from Dutch Beckelen. It's usually played by girls, though some boys also play this game. This game is a group game where the winner is the first to complete the challenge. How to play it by spreading the beckle, throwing the ball in the air, then taking the beckle again and catching the ball in one move. All this must be done in one move. In playing beckle ball, it takes concentration and coordination between eyes and hands. These games require hands speed to be able to pick up beckle and ball at the same time. In can train motor movement in children's skills in recreating the rhythm of times when throwing the ball, then taking the beckle at the same times when the ball is still in the air. This traditional game is also known for the song accompanying the game. It should be played by at least two people. However, it will be more fun if played in groups. Injit Injit Samut is played with the player's hands piled up and pins the back of the other player's hands. The lowest hand will move up to pinch his friend's hand when the song is finished being sung. There's no winner of this game, but what's fun is that we can pinch our friend's hands while singing the song together. Emotional quotient is one of the values that can be taken from this game, where children can learn to accept, assess, and manage emotional well. Usually the top players feel very happy because he will not feel pain from his friend's pinch, but after the song is over, he will feel the same as his friends, accepting the pain of being pinched. Local heroes, are you still with us? All over the world, the birth of a new baby is always celebrated as a form of parental joy for the birth of their child. The presence of the baby is one of the moments awaited by newly married couples. Having children is like a gift. There's even a quite well-known myth among the people in Indonesia. Having many children means having much wealth. Indonesia, which is the rich in custom and cultural, also has many traditions to welcome the birth of a baby. This birth ceremony is performed to honor the ancestor and gratitude for the birth of their child. The struggle of pregnancy for nine months is the best experience for every mother. The celebration of traditional birth ceremonies has different procedures and meaning for each region. That is what makes Indonesian rich in traditions and custom that must be preserved every time. Check out information on birth ceremonies according to Indonesian culture with local wisdom. The first is the Jatakarma Samskara ceremony. Jatakarma Samskara is the birth ceremony of the Balinese people. In this ceremony, prayers are chanted with the hope that the baby has a bright future. This birth ceremony is a form of gratitude 
for the children who are entrusted and cared for by their parents. Usually, the baby families prepare nasi tumpeng decorate with scythes and flowers. Furthermore, the leaders of the traditional ceremony will pray for the baby and the father will accompany his child during the ceremony. Next, the baby's father will touch and kiss his newborn baby while reciting a blessing incantation into the baby's ear. The incantation contains a hope that one day his son will grow as a smart and long-lived child. Also, the father should clean the baby's placenta and put it in a clay jug, then wrap it with a clean white cloth that has been written with an incantation. The last step is that it's then buried in the family's yard. Local heroes in the province of West Nusa Tenggara, precisely on the island of Lombok. There is a baby birth ceremony with unique custom and procedures. Medak Api is a childbirth ceremony to give a name for the baby. The Sasak people in Lombok believe the naming children must have a good meaning. They believe that the name that doesn't match will invite bad luck. Therefore, naming children cannot be done arbitrarily. The baby's parents usually consult with the Kiai or Pemangku regarding the name which will be given to their baby. Not everyone can propose a name for the baby. Only Kiai, Pemangku, or traditional birth attendants are allowed to choose a name. The tradition of giving the name or Meda Api itself is carried out after the baby is seven or nine days old. The Sundanese also have their pearl welcoming ceremony called Nenjak Bumi. Nenjak Bumi is a ritual of placing a baby on the floor made of split bamboo. Then the baby's mother stomp on the bamboo seven times. This is done with the hope that the baby will not be easily shocked and will not become a coward leather. Another way can also be done by hitting the hammer on the floor close to the baby positions. Then the mother will stomp her foot on the ground three times. The purpose is that one day, the baby will grow up and become a child who can conquer the harshness of the life of the world. Next, we head to the north of the island of Sumatra, precisely in the province of North Sumatra. In Toba Batak tradition in North Sumatra, Mamo Holi ceremony is held to welcome a new baby born in a new family. In essence, a Mamo Holi tradition is a thinkable form of the life philosophy of the traditional Batak people in the Bona Pasokit region who always help each other. A mother who has just given birth may need a rest for at least 10 days before she can prepare her food. And on the other hand, she needs food that is nutrition enough to ensure the smooth flow for breast milk for her baby. It is the duty of the family and the surrounding community to take care and prepare all the needs of the mother during the rest period. Moana, although her name is similar to one of the famous anime film title in Indonesia, Moana is the name of the traditions of welcoming the birth of a baby. Originating from people in the province of Central Sulawesi and South Sulawesi, for a long time ago, the ancestor of the Paumana tribe in Sulawesi carried out this tradition and passed it down from generation to generation. The baby who performs the Moana ceremony is expected to always be placed with safety and health. Ten days before the baby's birthday, invitations to relatives and friends are sent to attend Moana ceremony. The way to invite relative is unique by telling only one closest family 
then the family who get invited first will continue the invitation to other relatives and so on until all families get the invitation. Moana ceremony is performed as a sign of gratitude, hoping it will bring goodness for the baby. All right, local heroes. Next, more exciting and interesting information will come from various region of Indonesia. Stay with us at Local, local Wisdom. Wisdom. We're back again and stay with our Pet Parade program show, Local Wisdom. Local heroes, the change from childhood to adulthood is an important time in human life. That's why this traditional period is usually greeted with a special feast, celebration, or tradition. Some cultures carry out painful rituals to welcome adulthood. Some of them will be present in the segment. Just let's see. We begin this last segment with the island of a thousand traditions, Bali. In Bali, there is a tradition called Siat Geni, which means fire war. It comes from the village of Tuban, Badung Regency. Siat Geni is a tradition in the form of performances performed by local youth. Siat Geni has important functions as a means of bonding the togetherness of Tuban residents with the local residents and as the fusion of negative auras into positive ones to maintain the nature balance. This tradition is also an effort to create a harmonious relationship between humans with other humans humans with the environment and humans with Ida Yangwidi or God. The Siat Gani tradition is carried out once a year, precisely in the four months of the Balinese calendar, although using will fire in the ritual. The fire war did not cause serious injuries to the participants. On the other hand, the participants are also prohibited from holding grudges against other world participants. Crossing to the island of Sumatra, there is a tradition called Fahombo or also known as stone jumping. This ritual is carried out by the community in Bawo Matoluo village in the South Nias area. This tradition is only carried out by men who are old enough and mature. A boy who wants to get the title as grown man has to do fahombo and jumped over a rock as high as 2 meters. The fahombo tradition is passed down from generation to generation only to boys. However, not all boys are able to carry out this tradition even though they have been trained since childhood. The people of Nias believe that apart from practice, there is a magical element of ancestral spirit from someone to successful charm of a rock perfectly. The people of Nias have a tall and strong character inherited from the culture of war. The stone jumping traditions originate from the habit of fighting between villages on the island of Nias. In the past, the tribe on Nias Island often fought because they were provoked by ravens, land border, or slavery issue. Each village then fortified the area with stone or bamboo as high as 2 meters. Because of that, the tradition of stone jumping was born and carried out as preparation before fighting.
in Nagekeo Regency, East Nusa Tenggara, there is Dawe tribe that has a special ritual to mark maturity. Teenagers who are considered to turn adult in Dawe tribe will have their teeth cut, or known as Sorongi Is. Sorongi Is is done by sticking a small grinding stone into the teeth. Once stuck, the grinding stone is then rubbed repeatedly. This tradition is specifically carried out for a woman who is considered an adult. In the process, the family must first carry out the ritual of delivery offered in the form of rice, meat, battle, nut, and mold for the ancestor as gratitude and to ask for blessing. The poo is the Tandakwitam tell the story of ancestral spirits and traditional teaching in life. Sometimes it is interspersed with rhymes that are spoken reciprocally between women and men. Next, we visit Nalu tribe living in Seram Island, Maluku Province. Nalu tribe has a tradition of women's seclusion for some time in a simple building. This tradition is called Panamo. Anyone who is undergoing Panamo ritual is not allowed to be visited. This isolation continues even for months until they are used to feel the pain of living alone. For food and drink supplies, a woman would send supplies every day to her. When those assigned to send supplies come, this exiled woman will live alone from morning to night around the forest. Pregnant women in the Nalu tribe are also required to be in exile. Usually, those who were close to giving birth will be sent here. Every night, they are also alone. Contact with the outside world is only time when they get food. When the woman was about to give birth to her child, a shaman would visit them. The shaman would help with simple inquirement in afterbirth. The baby and the mother remain in seclusion for two weeks before they finally return home with their families and are greeted with joy. The beauty standards of women in each group of people must be different. One of the uniqueness ones is in Mentawai Island with the sharp teeth tradition. Mentawai Island has been inhabited by Mentawai tribe for thousands of years. For women in the Mentawai tribe, beauty is in the form of sharp teeth. The process of sharpening teeth takes a long time. This process is also very painful. However, to look more beautiful, women in the Mentawe tribe are willing to carry out this tradition. In addition, this tradition also signifies that Mentawe women who have carried out Kerikiki tradition are considered adult women. Indonesia is very rich in regional cultural and tradition in the form of language, literature, music, song, dance, games, traditional house, games, sport, food, and so on. Traditional cultural is one of the national wealth, so we should preserve it, and one way to preserve it is introduced to our children. The diversity of traditional cultures in each region enriches the uniqueness of Indonesia as a great nation. Times may change, generation may shift, 
but preservation of the traditional culture is our collective responsibility. Introducing the nation's culture to children will raise their awareness of the importance to love the nation's culture. Well, local heroes, this episode is over and we have to say goodbye. See you at the next Local Wisdom. Bye-bye.